Throughout all of the American wasteland, many factions litter the land, holding up within devastated cities like the Raiders of the Pit, space age underground bunkers like that of the Institute in the East Coast, as well as the giant fort overlooking the Hoover Dam like that of the terrifying Kaiser's Legion. With these factions, all of them have one ultimate focus, and that is their overall survival, as well as their preservation, making sure that whatever they do in their life, they will always leave an ongoing legacy that will be remembered for generations. For one group, however, their focus is a little different. Instead of looking at the mistakes of the past and trying to rebuild life that way, they instead look at the cause of the new world in an extremely positive light. This group would be known as the Church of the Children of Atom, who would set up their whole society worshipping the radiation lingering in the lands, as well as the nuclear bombs themselves, who they deemed as the vehicles of creation and life, and without them, they could not forge a new life. Throughout their years, this group would go around the country spreading their religion and worshipping any area that was filled with radiation or had been affected by the events of the Great War. But who is the Church of the Children of Atom? Where are they based? What is their ultimate goal? And where where are they now? Well, in today's video, we will explore this religious group and decipher what their religion really aims to do within the wastelands. This is the fanatical group known as the Church of the Children of Atom from the Fallout universe. The formation of the Church of Atom all started after the events of the Great War, more specifically when the survivors of this event discovered a large crater out within the capital wasteland. This crater would house an undetonated atomic bomb that lay right in the center of it all. Soon after the Great War, a group of settlers found this crater and chose to use it as their own shelter. Whilst living here, a few of the settlers would go on to spend a lot of time around this undetonated bomb and chose to worship it. Honor it as their new deity and the thing that gave them hope in this new world. As the settlers continued on within this crater setting up this new belief system based around the undetonated atomic bomb, the new zealots that were formed in this religion started building up the walls and clearing out all of the wreckage in the nearby area to create a new town where they could build up houses, create trade links and live away from the brutality of the post-apocalyptic wastelands. This town would eventually be set up and would go on to be labelled as Megaton. For the new citizens of Megaton, life was pretty easy as they only had one real rule for anyone that wanted to live there, set by the newly formed church. That rule was that the holy bomb in the middle of their new town was to never be disturbed and if you were to go near it, it was only to bask in its glory. Despite not all of the townspeople believing in this new religion of the atom, these people agreed to go along with it as they only saw this bomb as just a piece of harmless scrap from the Great War era. As the town of Megaton entered the decade of the 2250s, the religion of the children of Atom started to grow and the new town became known for it. This religion had one ideology and that was solely based on what they believed the bomb was capable of as well as its internal elements. To the church they believed that within every atomic mass in all of creation exists an entire universe. Every time an atom is split in an event, that universe universe is then separated into two and thus becoming two universes. Because of this idea that the church came up with, the atom became known as a creator deity that was more than capable of creating new worlds every time it divides through the acts of nuclear fission. To the church, the events of the Great War were seen as almost a new Big Bang event. It was to be celebrated, not dwelled upon, as this was a time where divine intervention took place as multiple new universes were created in one instant, opening up so many new possibilities for humanity. Radiation was seen as proof of Atom's influence on the environment and was a sign of its overall creation process and to the church, any radiation in the nearby area would be labelled as Atom's glow, its own presence. Atom's glow would be the main thing the religion would seek out and worship on a regular basis. Worshipping this radiation, the children would believe that they too could achieve division, as well as the glow would be able to break them apart and with it, they would be reborn 
and they would then come to witness all of the worlds within them. There are two ways the children of the atom want to achieve this process. The first process was seen as the most preferred way to go, and that was through a nuclear explosion, as that would be the fastest way of division. Or the second way would be through natural causes or irradiation, which the church would also seen as being an acceptable way of becoming one with the atom and its divine ways. Because of this ideology, the members of the church do not see their body as anything important. In fact, it's just a mortal shell and is there solely for the means of creating new life. Throughout the life of a member of the church, they would go out seeking irradiated areas to help set up shrines and other centers of worship which would also be used as places to get rid of those who did not believe in their cause and threaten their very existence and beliefs. On top of this, they would also go on to seek out nuclear weapons and nuclear stockpiles and defend them with their lives to make sure no one tries to dispose of them in a way that was unacceptable in the church's eyes. This means that the church are absolutely not pacifists as ultimately they profit from nuclear wars and they will do anything to defend their holy areas of the radiation, also known as atoms glow, from the unbelievers. These unbelievers are quite easy to spot. They are simply anyone who attempts to interfere with the spread of radiation. If they do, they are seen as blasphemous and need to be stopped. Despite this, however, anti-radiation meds are accepted by the religion due to the fact that some of their members who are denied radiation immunity because of some kind of special blessing from atom will now be allowed to serve under its blessing again. A confusing prospect for many outsiders of the religion, but to those members of the church, it's seen as a form of penitence, scouring oneself to embrace the glow anew. Most of the children of the religion are surprisingly immune to the effects of radiation. Those who want to join are usually inducted by drinking irradiated water which is provided by the confessor, or in some cases are taken to Atom Spring out within Mount Desert Island to drink from it, and when doing so would most likely experience visions said to be atoms calling. Those who survived this induction would be seen as strong and would prove they are immune and fit enough to take on other dangerous tasks in the name of Atom. They had finally become a member of the Church of the Children of Atom. With this religion now growing within the main hub of Megaton, a hierarchy structure would be set up which would be centered around the spiritual leaders. These spiritual leaders would be known as confessors if they are male and mothers if they are female. With these leaders, they would hold absolute authority and can issue commandments at will. And for the rest of the members of the church, if these commandments are not followed to the letter, they will suffer the consequences enforced by inquisitors of Atom, who were assigned to service by their leaders. Working under the leaders are the zealots, the military forces who are sworn to defend the faith and guard its followers and their shrines. Surprisingly, zealots are most of the time former mercenaries or raiders who converted at some point in their lives and turned to work under the command of a grand zealot. During the mid-2250s, the church was growing in population in Megaton specifically, and because of it were attracting new people to the area. In one instance, a young wastelander named Cromwell set out traveling the wasteland and found himself settling within Megaton. As he entered the area, the church granted him permission to stay due to the blessing and high standing of his predecessor in the church, who would go on to teach him the ways of Atom. These teachings helped shape Cromwell as he grew up into his adulthood and eventually became a vital asset in protecting and aiding the town. At some point in his life, Cromwell would go on to marry Mother Maya, and as he continued to embrace the Atom, Cromwell would take over the role of his once teacher and become Confessor Cromwell. But as Cromwell rose to the ranks and began preaching on the streets, he would become nothing more than just a distraction to most of the citizens of Megaton. And because of it, the church's attendance started to dwindle, and the church had begun falling in popularity. To all those venturing to Megaton in the year of 2277, it would appear that the Church of the Children of Atom was just a small group of cultists worshipping a single bomb in the town, whilst their leader stands in the pool of radiated water, spreading stories about how the bomb will bring about new life. But in reality, this church still holds a lot of power around America, and their threat on the land is still worth taking into account. Despite the church's visible dwindling 
numbers, Confessor Cromwell is actually seen as one of the greatest prophets of Atom. And whilst not visible at first, he had gone on to set up smaller groups to venture out into the wider world and to spread the word of Atom, as well as finding holy sites to make sure they became under the occupation of the churches. With the new appointment of Confessor Cromwell, many believed the church's influence was falling. A few members of the church were said to have left as well, with one lady known as Mother Curie III leaving the children of Atom, taking with her all of Megaton's aqua pura, a type of purified water, and with it would go on to irradiate it and distribute it as holy water to spread the radiation and enhance her religious beliefs under her new religion called the Apostles of the Eternal Light. With her was another ex-member of the church, Gerard, who saw more benefit in joining the Apostles of the Eternal Light once again, giving out holy water to travellers passing by. However, these offshoots did not worry Cromwell, and in fact, prior to the events of 2277, Cromwell had already thought out new plans to expand the church's influence around the world. In the decade of 2260 and up to 2270, a group under the influence of Cromwell and the church left Megaton and travelled north heading towards the Commonwealth and more significantly, the island that was once known as Mount Desert Island. As they got closer to their destination, these groups eventually split up with one expedition under the leadership of Mother Assault, settling in the area they would label as the Crater of Atom, and the second group being led by Confessor Martin and Grand Zealot Tectus, landing in the lands known as Far Harbor. The Crater of Atom was said to be the ground zero for the high-yield nuclear explosion southwest of Boston, which was witnessed by the sole survivor before heading down into Vault 111 in 2077. This whole explosion outright destroyed Massachusetts and with it created the Glowing Sea. The Glowing Sea is not actually a sea however, instead it is just a vast barren landscape that is now heavily irradiated. Radioactive ponds, charred trees, wrecked cars and heaps of rubble litter this land with barely any life visible due to how dangerous the radiation is within the area. Area. On top of that, it is said that any regular rain clouds that pass over this glowing sea area turn into heavily radiated ones. And once they release their rainfall, parts of the Commonwealth that get these clouds will go on to experience frequent rad storms, which can be deadly for anyone caught unguarded. Because of this area being absolutely swarmed with radiation, this was a prime place for Mother Assault and her members of the church to set up within and make it their holy place where they can worship the radiation sent by their entity, Atom. The crater of Atom would be their shrine and would lurk there within the sickly greenish yellow glow that would emit from the crater and can be seen from far across the Commonwealth. For those who landed within Far Harbor, however, at first they were tolerated by the local community living there. But when the fog began to encroach on human settlements around the mid-2270s, these members of the church were driven out of the area, taking with them Far Harbor's doctor, Anna. The reason for the children's banishment was simply due to the fact that they saw this fog as a holy embodiment of Atom and wanted to worship it. But to the rest of the residents, this fog had been taking over their lives and killing them in the process. With their exile from the area, the children of Atom needed to find a new home, when suddenly they would go on to experience a vision from within the fog of the land. This being would be labelled as the mother of the fog, and was rumoured to have been one of the original children to have set foot on the island, or someone who set up the original Atom shrines throughout it. Living life as a recluse, this lady would travel the island, most likely using stealth boys to get around undetected, and would use this to scavenge any resources she could find. Now on her own, many believed this individual to have disappeared a long time ago, and now not a part of the church. However, living this recluse life, she would now find her meaning in life by leading the new children of Atom on their new pilgrimage to their new home on the island. Seeing the mother of the fog in front of them, the children would go on to follow her and would find themselves at the Mount Desert Island Naval Facility, an old submarine pen which would be occupied by the experimental synth made by the Institute named Dima. Dima had not seen any human life in centuries and because of it, he instantly welcomed the pilgrims and grew a friendship with them, especially with their confessor, 
Martin. With this relationship growing, Dima handed the nuclear submarine base to the children as he would go on to find the new location of Arcadia to set up his new synth colony. But despite this, Dima would hold back the nuclear codes from the children, making it so the children wanted to seek out the secrets within the nuclear base, and some began to resent Dima for stopping the will of Atom. But despite that, with the new nuclear submarine base under their control, now being named as the Nucleus, the children of Atom grew in strength and made the most of living within this holy area. With this new area, they also grew in their numbers, and now with many people living within the base, they would go on to send some out to find irradiated items to recover them and return them to the Nucleus. On one of these adventures out into the island, Grand Zealot Tectus would go on to discover Lieutenant Brian Richter, who had been sealed within a containment bunker. Saving Richter's life, Tectus would discover that he was in fact immune to radiation poisoning, as he was the sole survivor of his unit, and with this discovery, Richter became a real believer in the way of the Atom, and with that, became a zealot himself. But despite the constant gains of the children, they had a problem. The terrifying fog that had been attacking the residents of the island had been expanding all over the land and was now threatening the children's own expansion. By the year of 2279, the fog situation was getting worse and worse, and for all of the other residents who were not children of the Atom, they would have to be solely located on the pier in Far Harbor, trying desperately to live peacefully and survive the land's elements and monsters that lurk within. For the children, this fog was their new goal. Instead of doing anything to combat it, the children wanted this radioactive fog to blanket all of the island. This was the way of the Atom. This could have also been to make sure that the mother of the fog was aided even further, as she now had become a mythical figure to their faith, a divine messenger to them, and one of the holiest visions of the cult. Without the fog, the fear could be that she would no longer appear to them. For their once friend Dima, however, he had a different plan, and that was to help save the people located at the port. Here Dima gifted the people fog condensers to make sure the fog was kept at bay. Things continued on until the year of 2287, where the situation suddenly escalated. Here Brother Andrews, a member of the Children of Atom, braved the sacred fog to try and preach to the people of Far Harbor, to get them to accept their religion and accept their impending fate. But approaching the port, Brother Andrew was gunned down all almost immediately by Alan Lee, Far Harbor's gun merchant. Due to the fact that Brother Andrews was a peaceful missionary, this infuriated the church as well as undermined Confessor Martin's already shaky authority, who just wanted peaceful coexistence. This made the children of Atoma once again dwindling religion, as their authority was really lacking under his leadership. Eventually this religion was to finally come to its conclusion thanks to the discovery made by Sister Gwyneth. During her travels, Sister Gwyneth would find an old scientific text which would detail exactly what an atom actually was. Finding out that an atom was a single speck of matter in a vast emptiness absolutely destroyed her faith and made her question everything. Confessor Martin tried everything to bring her back to her beliefs, but her discovery also questioned his faith as well. It didn't take long until Confessor Martin had had enough, and one night in 2287, Martin disappeared completely from the nucleus, never to be seen again. With Martin's disappearance, a new leader had to be found, and with that, High Confessor Tectus took his position, with Grand Zealot Richter as his right-hand man. But with their new goals taking shape within the island, Tectus would become a paranoid leader, believing that those who do not follow him blindly are heretics and would need shutting down leading to a long new era of Tectus weeding out the disloyal and instilling new loyalty tests. On top of that, they would try everything to find the nuclear codes within the nucleus that Dima was hiding from them to enhance the will of Atom. And with that key, they would also go on to turn off all power on the island, meaning the fog condensers could not run anymore and the fog could finally consume the land. For the rest of the wasteland, the Church of the Children of Atom is still a dangerous religion, embracing the radiation and weapons of the old world that devastated cities all over. Under the leadership of Confessor Cromwell, they were just a small group of fanatics that put no real harm on the land, but just wanted to embrace the way of the Atom, even if that did mean setting a whole town around a still active bomb. However, under the rule of High Confessor Tectus and Grand Zealot Richter, they are far harsher in their rule, shutting down anyone that dares question 
their beliefs. What the future holds for this religion is up to the sole survivor and their actions within Far Harbor. Would they side with Dima to aid the remaining civilians located on the pier? Or would they side with the children who wanted to blanket the island with the radioactive fog? But even if the children did succeed there, the children's influence could still spread much further out than just the Commonwealth and the capital wasteland. What other radioactive areas could they find and set up shrines at? What other nuclear bunkers or weapon stockpiles could they occupy? And what other bombed areas could they seek to locate? Only time can really tell. But for now, this has been the story behind the Church of the Children of Atom, who inhabit Megaton, the Crater of Atom, and the Nucleus in Far Harbor. And that is all for now. I want to say a huge thank you for watching this video as well as my amazing patrons who allow me to make videos like this, including our small fishes, our big fishes, Christopher, AVP Man, Last Persona User, and Arto Krem, our YouTube channel Wise Ones, Jambu, Fiery Italian, and Ico the Wolf, our Sharks Well Such Gaming and Jason X117, our huge Megalodons, Sinus and Jacob Garcia, and our absolutely legendary Sarfish, Shadow SGT. If you also want to support this channel, you can find the link in in the description below but if not please do leave a like check out my other lore videos leave a subscribe if you haven't already as well as a nice comment to help get this video out there but that is all for now thanks again stay safe out there and see you all in the next one cheers